Hi everyone, welcome back to satdecoded.com. In this video, we're going to talk about shifting functions, which is basically when you have a function, or rather when you have a graph of a function, such as this parabola that I've drawn out for us right here, labeled f of x, when you have a graph of a function and it actually changes location. It doesn't change shapes, meaning it doesn't get skinnier or wider or rotates. It just literally shifts location. So if this parabola right here is considered f of x, and the question asks, what is f of x plus 2, or rather, what does that look like? We have to understand how this affects our original graph. So when you have a number right here outside of the f of x, this is actually affecting the y value. Because if you remember from our previous lessons, f of x as an entire function is an output and outputs are y values. So if we just replace the f of x with a y, what we really get is y plus 2. I'm just carrying down this 2 over here. So if you're adding 2 to the y, you're really just affecting the y value. So what does this look like on our graph? Well, it's still going to be the exact same parabola, but just in a different location. Since this plus 2 is added to the y, it's going to move the entire graph up two units on the y-axis. So let's just track a point. Let's track this point right here because that seems to be the vertex of the parabola. And right now in our original uh, graph, that's at the origin 0, 0. But since that point is going to move up two spaces on the y-axis, uh, the, the entire curve, this entire parabola is going to move up along with it. So now it's going to look something more like that. So now the vertex here is going to be 0, comma, 2. So that's we can label this as f of x plus 2. What if we had something like uh, f of x minus 3? What would that look like, f of x minus 3? Well, it's really the same concept or the same idea. This f of x as a whole function is our output, which is a y value. So what we really get is y minus 3, because this minus 3 just carries down. So instead of moving it up 2 on the y-axis, now we're going to move it down 3, or negative 3. So let's go ahead and draw that out and see what that looks like. So again, it's going to be the same exact parabola. It's not going to rotate. It's not going to get skinnier or fatter. It's just going to literally shift down 3 units. So we're still going to track an original point, which is the 0, 0. But now it's going to move down three units. So now the parabola will look something like that with a new vertex at 0, comma, negative 3. Cool. So what if we had something affecting not outside the function, but actually inside the function? For example, f of x minus 2. Well, this is a little trickier because now it's no longer, the minus 2 part is no longer affecting the y value because it's almost part of the, the whole function now. So what it's really affecting is just the stuff inside the parentheses. Remember, stuff inside the parentheses are considered inputs, and inputs are considered x values. So we really have x minus 2. Except stuff inside the parentheses is counterintuitive. So even though it says negative 2 right here, which logically you might think would move uh, on the x-axis a negative 2 units, which is towards the negative side, towards uh, the left-hand side, in actuality, it's actually going to move to the right-hand side, 2 units, positive. So now it's going to look like that when we, re when, our, when we redraw our parabola of f of x minus 2, where all of that is inside. So our new vertex is 2, comma, 0. What if we combine both stuff inside the parentheses as well as stuff outside the parentheses? What might that look like? So maybe they give us a question such as f of x plus 3 minus 2. So again, remember the entire function, that's the output, which is our y value. So what we really get is a y minus 2, which means this entire original parabola of our original f of x is going to shift down two units 
on the y-axis. However, we also have this plus 3 inside the parentheses. So earlier I just told you that stuff inside the parentheses, notice how it affects the x value, it doesn't affect the y value. Stuff inside the parentheses is counterintuitive. So rather than adding 3 towards the positive side on the x-axis, we're going to subtract 3 towards the negative side. So remember, we're going to move the whole parabola down 2 units on the y-axis, and we're going to move it uh, 3 units towards the left-hand side on the x-axis. So if we draw that out, it might look like something like this. So we're going to move it 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis, as well as 1, 2 down on the y-axis. So our new vertex is down here. So the parabola would look something, you know, something like that. So that is f of x plus 3 minus 2. And that's really the basics of shifting. You just have to notice if the plus or minus value out, outside the, the function, is that going to move it up or down? Positive uh, values move it up on the y-axis, negative values move it down. Stuff inside the parentheses is affecting the x value, so that moves it left and right on the x-axis, except it's counterintuitive. So let's try um, another question, a little bit harder. I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase this stuff now. And I'm, I'm actually going to get rid of the whole question, and we'll just pull up uh, a brand new question now. So let's take a look at this question right here. So if this graph on the left-hand side is our g of x, that's our original function for, for g, notice how this function right here, this new function, is exactly the same shape and the same proportions as our original function. The only difference is this graph has shifted or changed location somehow from our original position. So the question might ask us, what is the formula for this new function if this right here on the left-hand side is our original uh, function? Well, we just have to track a point. It really doesn't matter which point you track, but I like to track nice easy points, for example, maybe this, this point right here. There's a nice sharp corner right here, so I think sharp corners are probably the easiest points to track rather than a random point like this. So if we track this point, let's first label uh, the ordered pair. So on the x-axis we have negative 3, and on the y-axis we have 1, 2, so positive 2. So negative 3, comma, 2. Well, where did this point right here go on our shifted graph? As you can tell, this is the corresponding point on our new graph. So let's go ahead and give that an ordered pair as well. So on the x-axis you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And on the y-axis we still have 1, 2. So now we can compare our shifts. So we can take a look at our original point and our new location for that same point. And then we can figure out exactly how this graph shifted. So if we look at the y-axis first, remember the y-axis is represented by the second number, which is the y-value. It's 2 in this case. That's the same exact number right here, which means there was no shift in the y-axis. So the y-axis just stays alone. Well, what about on the x-axis? This time on the x-axis, it went from uh, it went from this original negative three to our new negative five. So how did it do that? Well, it means it moved in this direction two units. So how do we represent a move two units in that direction? Well, remember since this is affecting this two is affecting the x value, it has to go inside the parentheses because uh, shifts in the x-axis are always inside the parentheses. So a lot of people think it's going to be g of x uh, minus 2. However, minus 2, if let me just write that out, g of x minus 2. Remember I said that things inside the parentheses are counterintuitive? So this negative 2, if we think about it counterintuitively, would actually mean we're going to shift it 2 units towards the right-hand side, which is not what we will not what we want because we actually want to shift it two units to the left hand side. So this would actually be incorrect. The correct version would be g of x plus 2 because plus 2 actually means shifting it two units towards the negative side. So this would be our answer 
that would be the equation of this new graph according to our original uh, original function right here. So I'm going to try another example with you guys. And here it is. This one's uh, a little bit harder. We have two functions right here. Let's call this curve right here g of x. And let's call this curve f of x. Again, I try to show that these are exactly the same function. Um, I mean, th the shape of the function is exactly the same. They're not wider or skinnier. Uh, they're not you know, ro rotated. They're not flipped upside down or reversed or reflected anywhere. They're exactly the same shape, just shifted location somewhere. So again, you can choose any point you want to track, but usually the easiest ones are kind of at the vertexes, or, or sorry, vertices, or at some sort of a sharp corner. So in this case, let's track this point right here, negative 1, comma 5 on the x-axis, negative 1, and then it went up 5 on the y-axis. So where is that corresponding point on our f of x function? Well, it's right here, which I've already labeled for us. It's 2, comma 3. So we want to see how this point right here shifted to this point. So sometimes it helps to just label it and draw out little arrows for, for yourself. So in this direction, how many units did it move? Well, if we're moving left and right, in this case right, that's moving along the x-axis. So moving along the x-axis means we got to count uh, the difference between the x-coordinate and our new x-coordinate. So negative 1 to positive 2 is a difference of 3, which means it moved right 3 units. Now let's see if it moved up or down. It looks like uh, it actually shifted um, down a couple bit, a couple units. So if we shift it down, again, let's track our point. We started at positive 5 for the y value, and now it's at 3. So that means it moved down 2 units. So here I've, I've given us actually two separate questions. g of x equals what? And f of x equals what? This is really important because there's a huge difference between these two questions g of x equals something, which means we're going to be um, playing with our f of x function and manipulating the numbers in the f of x, f of x function in order to uh, end up with a result of g of x. g of x is our final ending point. So if g of x is our ending point, then we got to start looking over here. We're actually going to start from the f function and move towards the g function. So everything that I just wrote right here is actually going to be reversed. So if we start from 2, 3, we have to move left 3 units in order to get from the 2 to the negative 1. And then if we start from the 3 as our y coordinate, we're going to move up to the reverse of this in order to arrive from uh, 3 to 5. We've got to go up 2. So how do we write that um, g of x equals f? Let's do the, uh, the x stuff first. So x stuff is this uh, three units towards the left-hand side, which actually means f plus 3, because remember, it's counterintuitive. And then it moved up two units. And this is just normal. It's not counterintuitive. It's just exactly what you would expect, so plus 2. What if they asked us the reverse question? f of x equals what? So in this case, f of x is our end result, which means we have to start with g of x. So we start with g of x, meaning we start with this point right here, and we end up with this point right here. How many units does it shift? Well, I did that earlier. It's this right here. So that means f of x equals taking the g function, and we're going to shift it three units to the right, which means x minus 3. Again, it's counterintuitive inside the parentheses. Stuff inside the parentheses only affects the x-axis. And then we're going to go down two units on the y-axis, which means minus 2, because this part is exactly as you would expect. It is not counterintuitive. So this is exactly how you would do this kind of question. Sometimes they, the SAT will actually complicate the question even further. Don't be surprised by all these tricks that the SAT tries to throw at you. All they do is build upon a basic 
uh, concept. And I've just explained the basic concept to you of, of how shifting functions work. So just keep applying it and whatever curveball they try to throw at you, you should be able to answer it. So let me give you an example of a curveball they might, they might give us in this question. So we still have our g of x curve and we still have our same f of x curve, which is just a, a shift of the g of x curve. Well, what if they said uh, g of x equals f of x plus h plus k? And now maybe they want us to find out what h uh, minus k equals. Well, if you take a look at this, and, and we've actually already solved that whole thing right here. We already found out that the, uh, the plus 3 right here is representative of this h. And we already found out the plus k right here is this plus 2 right here. So we just have to re uh, replace it. The h is a 3, and the k is a 2. So 3 minus 2 equals what? Well, equals 1. And that is our final answer. What if the question asked um, the reverse using this one? What if they said f of x equals g of h plus or x plus h um, plus k? And they're asking the same question. What does h minus k equal? Well, in this case, the signs of the numbers are very important. So in the variable portion of, of uh, this question, they say x plus h. However, in our what we solved, we got x minus 3. Well, remember, x minus 3 is kind of like saying the same thing as x plus negative 3. So this plus right here is very important because we have to match this plus right here. We have x plus, so we also start with x plus, which makes our h right here actually negative 3. And same idea right here. It says plus k. So, but we have a negative 2 right here. Well, that's the same thing as saying plus negative 2. So our k right here is actually negative 2. Let me just write that out so we remember. h is actually negative 3, and k is actually negative 2. So if they ask us, what is h minus k? Well, that's the same thing as negative 3 minus negative 2. And remember, when we have double negatives, that becomes positive. So what, what we really have is negative 3 plus 2, which equals negative 1. So negative 1 would be the answer to this question. All right, good, good luck, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.